we're back out here once again. And today we're talking about the versatility of the humble wacky rig. I'm going to show you some tricks and some hacks you probably don't know that will help you get way more bites as we move into the fall. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Got him. That's a pretty good one, kids. On the old brown worm, check it out. Ooh, that's a good toad right there. Ooh, he's peeling drag. That's a good fish. Trying to get buried. Uh-uh, you're not getting buried in that stuff. Come here. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And for much of the country, we're starting to experience some cooler nights. To some degree, even some cooler days, although there are a few hot spots here and there. But the point is, those bass understand that the fall transition is just around the corner. It's coming up pretty quick. And also, the fall feed. We've been talking about baits such as weightless flukes and presentations like small crankbaits and what have you, but a lot of that is about to change. See, I went back through my video and I looked at all the fish catches I had for the past few years for the month of August, September, and October, and I noticed something that really stood out. This little guy right here, the Wacky Rig, becomes a major player about this time of year. Those bass are moving up shallow, they're starting to get where you can beat the bank again for a lot of the fall. And something like a wacky rig will become key. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be shallow. That doesn't mean you have to beat the bank even with a wacky rig. I'm going to show you how to fish one of these in any depth of water you want without losing that weightless shimmy. It's a really good setup. But for the most part, you know, there's pretty much two ways of rigging this that are standard. You can go without the ring and hook it through like that. Now I prefer to use the O-ring and I do my wacky rig to the side like that instead of through the other way. And the reason I do that is because this makes that presentation just a little more weedless, especially whenever that hook point is facing down, that hook shank will actually act like a bit of a weed guard. So in places with heavy vegetation, you always have to think about how that vegetation works, how it's going to affect your presentation Something like that can be a huge difference between getting a bunch of glop on every single cast or just having to pick a, off a few strands of vegetation every once in a while. Believe me, it can make a huge difference. So, what are some of the ways that we can change up the wacky rig? I talked about it being versatile, and it is. And I'm going to show you some things you probably don't know, including one hack that I'm positive you've probably never seen before. But we're going to start with, you know... The good old Waco rig, right? You guys have heard me talk about this. You've seen me talk about this. The good old one on EWG. I've got a tungsten nail weight that I've got shoved in the bottom here, and it just falls like a normal wacky rig. In the water, it looks so enticing. It just looks so good that those fish have a hard time turning it down. They have a hard time leaving it alone. And I've gotten so many strikes on the Waco rig. To be honest, I've caught more fish on a Waco rig this year than any other presentation, and it's not even close. And that's a first for me. Usually it's something like a jig or a Texas rig, but this year the Waco rig has been outstanding. And you guys who are fishing it have sent me pictures of eight, nine pound bass that you've been catching with the Waco rig. So that's amazing. So that's just the first thing that I'm doing. Again, underwater, it looks amazing. It looks attractive to those fish. It's something that those bass are really excited about. It gets their curiosity going, and it gets really huge strikes. So if you're not fishing a Waco rig, that's one way that you can do it. Again, it's still going to be a little bit shallow because we're fishing 132nd ounce or 116th ounce tungsten nail weights. I'm not fishing it in anything more than like 8 feet of water, 9 feet of water, just because it still falls not much faster than a regular wacky rig. Now next up, 
say you want to fish a little bit deeper or you're fishing around some heavy cover or you have some thick brush or whatever then we've got the good old wacky jig this is what i call the wacky jig this is just a bitsy bug jig taking a skirt off of it this is something that i have a penchant for doing you know taking a small bitsy flip or bitsy bug or a small jig like that a small swim jig taking the skirt off of it and using it in a different way in this way it's a wacky rig jig head right now you say low brow why don't you just use those weedless wacky hooks well quite honestly i don't like them i've not found one that works how i like it i've got so much vegetation i have to deal with i have so much slop that i have to deal with those hooks just aren't any good and i found that in my area a lot of times they can cover up that hook gap and i miss fish i don't get that good hook set that i want something like this works far better this is just a one quarter ounce head and it gives me a good fall and that worm shimmies very very nicely on the way down now it doesn't fall nearly as fast as you might think it would so i'm not going to be fishing this in 50 or 60 feet of water you know unless i've got a while for it to fall down but in 15 feet of water 20 feet of water this will actually work pretty good i can actually increase this to a 3 8 or even a half ounce if i really need to but i really don't like to go more than a quarter ounce for most of the time simply because of the fact that i like how that gives me that shimmy on that worm it gives me something that i feel is most appealing to those bass so something like the wacky jig again if you're not using something like that give it a try you know as we're talking about here as you're seeing a wacky rig is very very versatile and not just for beating the bank use a regular wacky rig right up near the bank let that weightless worm fall and as long as you're patient with it you're really going to get some nice fish as i said i've caught a lot of fish on the wacky rig as we move into the fall but step back a little bit something like that wacky jig or even a waco rig can do you some really good damage you can catch a lot of fish pulling back just a little bit and you can still get that wacky shimmy because that's what we're really after right we're after that wacky shimmy the way that worm falls in the water so as long as we have that as long as we have that fall the way the worm works in the water then that's solid we are doing great that's what we're after but i've got one more I've got one more hack that I'm pretty sure you don't know about. See, here recently, my good buddy Steve Rogers over at Steve Rogers Outdoors, he did a video on the wacky free rig, where you basically take a free rig and a wacky rig and you combine them together. And it looks really good. But several years ago, um, pro anglers like Matt Steffen turned me on to a different way. It's similar to the free rig, but it's slightly different. But you can fish any depth of water with a weightless wacky rig doing it like this. It's really crazy. I have fished 40, 50 feet of water, almost like I'm fishing a drop shot with this wacky rig setup. Now, what is it? Well, it's actually very, very simple. It's this contraption oops, right here. It is this contraption right here. And I have a barrel swivel on one end and a leader in the middle to just a bell sinker on the other end. It doesn't even have to be very heavy. This one here might be an eighth. You know, you can go to like a three sixteenths or a quarter. But if you notice in the middle here, I've got that Gamakatsu G finesse hook with a wacky rigged worm and it slides back and forth. I don't have a knot on there. It just slides back and forth. So I'm tying this on like a leader, right? Almost like you're doing a Carolina rig or whatever. I tie that on as a leader, and then this allows me to fish that wacky rig as deep as I want to. This weight gets to the bottom, and when it gets there to the bottom, then that worm flutters down. Because as it's falling, that worm's gonna stay up here by that barrel swivel. That water pressure and the drag is gonna cause that worm to ride high when it gets down to the bottom, and then that worm falls it's a cheat it gives you the ability to fish a weightless wacky rig on any fishery as deep as you want to it's pretty crazy so for those of you who fish super deep fisheries for those of you who are fishing you know 75 85 feet of water you can theoretically fish that wacky rig in those waters 
at pretty much any depth you want here. You can make the leader longer, you can make the leader shorter, whatever suits your needs. And I found that in deep water in my area, it actually works quite well. Now, I'm not using that rig particularly so much on the big lake simply because, well, I don't have a need to, except there are certain instances when over those bass are pulling out and I'm finding them deep and I tie that on and I'm telling you what, it's just the thing. But I'm catching them with the other wacky rigs, but I fish that mainly on the private trophy bass lake, which is the deepest lake in my area. And it can get to 45 and 50 feet in some areas, which for my area, that's very, very deep. And whenever I see that depth of water and I'm seeing those fish down there like that, well, then I can just use this little new job, this little, you know, rig right here. And I'm telling you what, it works. It works so well because fish at that depth, they've never seen a wacky rig. They've never seen it down there. Goes along with show those bass something different. And that's what we're trying to do every single time. And you'd be amazed at just how well it works and what kind of huge strikes you can get whenever you pull that out of your back pocket. So there you have it, a few simple and easy to do tricks to modify your wacky rigs to make them much more versatile. You'd be surprised at how well they work and give you the ability to fish a wacky rig in pretty much any type of water. Give it a try. I know you'll like the results. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.